Right, I'm just going to do a new player guide talking about um, just new player stuff in general. Now, this guide is going to be focused around very, very new players who have just kind of downloaded the game. Now, if you don't fit into that category, but you still want to kind of watch it, fine. Veteran players, probably not for you. Um, a lot of my content is based around new players because unfortunately the game doesn't have a tutorial. People are lost, etc., etc. It's 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 a vicious cycle, and this is one reason why the game's not that busy. Um, so straight away you come to uh, Planet Side um, logo, and then you obviously you log in. Now um, some people have said that if you can't seem to log in to the main continent, that's because you haven't downloaded the full game. So check you've downloaded the full game um, before proceeding. Now, um, they used to have a tutorial, but I think they've scrapped it. So now they have zero tutorial. Now, in this video, I'm gonna kind of brush over some stuff. Now, I'm gonna talk about NC in particular because that's faction of play. But um, hopefully this guide will, will be for any faction and just kind of give generalized stuff to make it easy for you. Um, I know this game's a bit confusing. Now, straight away, you come to the character screen. Now. You have characters that you can make. NSO, uh, I'll talk about NSO in a sec, but in terms of what faction to pick, just pick any faction. Doesn't really matter. Just pick whatever character model you, so look at the character model and think, oh, he looks nice. I'll play him and then just play. Like, honestly, you will have a better time um, just picking whatever because you can always make a different character on a different faction. It's not the end of the world. Um, you know, a lot of people have said, oh, I should have picked TR. Just go make a TR character and play TR. It doesn't really matter. You know, it's not going to change anything. The only downside to it is if you've worked on a character for a while, um, changing factions, you're kind of starting from level one again. But eventually you'll go around all the factions anyway and get a feel for a different factions. So, I mean, for me, really, I do play other factions sometimes, but generally I stay on NC. I'm only interested really in NC. But, um, in terms of NSO, so NSO is the robot faction, they um, go around all the factions, whatever has the lowest pop, they go on it. So um, to get an NSO you have to play for a certain amount of time, I think you have to get level 30 on your main character. So your main character would be like an NC character. And then you have the option to go and talk to somebody at Sanctuary and then it gives you the option to unlock uh, an NSO. Now I haven't really played NSO. Um, I'm only level 30, but still, I thought I'd mention it because someone out there might be thinking what the hell's going on. Now, what you do, you, you obviously start your faction, you give yourself a name. You can always delete the character and restart the character. Um, so don't worry too much if you wait for certs. One thing I will say with this, I'm just going to click the character and start locking in. But if you start putting um, certs into your main character and it doesn't really work out, at level 15, you can reset your certs back to zero and it will give you all the certs back what you've spent money on. So if you bought like a new gun and you're probably thinking, oh, the gun's not that great. I wish I hadn't spent that money. At level 15, you get you can reset your, your cert anyway. So just do that and gain all the thousand certs back. What I will say for the most part is try and play Medic. Um, Medic gives you quite a high cert gain. Now, I'll explain a bit about currencies because there's a lot, and it might take me a while, but um, generally, for the most part, currencies are the most confusing because there's like five different currencies, I think. Um, I could be wrong, but there's a lot of currencies out there, but I'll, ex I'll try and explain. So, if you go in, obviously, I'm just going to go into the, I'll click options and on this. So, here you can see in the corner, there is, I'm level four and I've got W correspondent, which is my name. And then I've got Daybreak in the top corner. Daybreak is bought with real money. So at some stage, I obviously spent money on the game. That's why I've got 49. I had some left over. Next to that is certs. Um, below that is 750, as you can see. Now that's called nanites. Now nanites regen over time. So I'm not sure, I can't remember how many you get per minute um, you get more if you're a member but um, I think you get around a hundred is it uh, I might be wrong actually I think it's 50 but anyway you, you so nanites every time you pull something 
like a vehicle or a max or an air vehicle or whatever you use nanites so I'll, I'll try and explain that in a minute I'll try and give you an example if I can so um, to use your character doesn't cost nanites but to use certain things within the character can cost nanites like grenades can cost 50 nanites I believe um, is it 5 nanites or 50 I don't even know. just let me um, so to use stuff like a grenade like a frag grenade um, you use nanites to get them back now nanites regen over time so yeah most of the time I don't run out of nanites that often it's not something I'm really taking into account and I don't have membership so it's not a, a big problem for me but um, yeah so just to clarify I'm in Sanctuary at the moment this is where you spawn when you download the game and you come into the game this is where you spawn in Sanctuary now um, to get out of Sanctuary and go to the main game you have to come to these terminals now these I call them world terminals they say warp gate on them there's, there's loads dotted around there's one over there there's one over there uh, there's a few upstairs and yeah so go into the terminal and you'll get this screen you can go to Harson, which is the open continent at the moment you have VR um, virtual reality now you can go in there and test out any of the guns you can test out all the equipment the tanks you can put stuff on your tank you can test out cosmetics stuff like that um, Colty is not open anymore and Sanctuary is what we're in at the moment um, SME is not open as a continent as of now because um, yeah they, they they took it out like a year ago but but these are in rotation so they'll rotate every five hours on a on a continent a continent alert will, will kick off every five hours and you'll have to try and win the continent alert well you don't have to try and win it but um, whoever wins or loses you just change to the next continent so these are called continents osha indar amrish and hassan and yeah you come to this walk gate terminal um, i thought i'd show you that first just because a lot of people come into into sanctuary and they get so confused about how to get out of this place um, it's a big place and it's, it's lost um, things to note in Sanctuary is the mission board is quite useful you click it you have missions you can do to earn some extra certs now as you can see in the corner there um, if I go into this I have 332 certs now certs are what you earn in game you I think every 250 experience you get one cert so it does take a while but it all adds up this is why i said playing medic is is kind of important now things to note in sanctuary um i'm going to go uh, over to the vendors and just give you a quick insight now the mission board as you get higher levels um you'll get different missions you won't get 75 certs you'll end up getting 100 certs per mission now they vary depending on what you're doing. It can be a medic mission, heavy mission, engineer mission, whatever. But um, so with these, um, so this is called an A7 vendor. Um, this is A7 here. This is what you would use to um, unlock guns. Now, as you can see here, you've got BC. I think it's, uh, does that say BC on it? Oh, DC, is it? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. It's got 799. Now you shouldn't be buying um, don't buy any of these guns with real money now that's called daybreak 799 is the daybreak you don't spend daybreak on this just save up your is um, save up your a7 over time do the missions eventually you'll be able to earn a hundred um, a7 per day by doing the missions just save up and over time you can buy yourself something now what would I recommend buying as a new player? Well, first of all, I would get the burlap camo just because it's a camo that looks different. Um, it does look pretty cool. Um, it's just something. Um, there's not many I would recommend really. Most of these are quite meme and you would never use them. So um, I would recommend the QR if, if you're going for your first gun. Um, outside of that, probably the Kappa, but again, I don't really use much of these so yeah um, I would get the burlap camo as a new player um, so moving on we've got the a7 uh, so you've got the a7 vendor there that's the eight what the a7 looks like 
um, you get them from the missions so go to the mission board do the mission start getting levels and then as soon as you start leveling your character um, you'll start getting different missions you'll get a7 missions um, yeah so that's that now this is called hey, the a um, so you got the a7 vendor got and then you've got this guy he's the iso vendor now this is the green currency as you can see this is this currency is red i know it's not Hopefully it's not going to be. As look, a new player, a I was I was totally lost. But with these particular things, these are called implants. So if you go to your character, so you go to the infantry screen, you will see down at the bottom that you can unlock um, implants. Now implants, they're not they're not game changing. They're not going to make you like some OP guy that goes around killing everybody. Um, that comes down to hitting headshots. But hey, how you doing, Slick? Implants in general are pretty Got useful. Him. And it's a good thing to have now as a new player say for example you decide to play medic i'm just going to use medic as, a, as an example um with things like combat surgeon um so what you want to be doing as a medic you want to be getting combat surgeon straight off the bat that is the first thing you should go for now um with iso you start unlocking it um through doing missions you get 100 per day and you can unlock if you stay on and a continent alert comes on um, when you lose or win a continent alert, you gain 200 for losing and I think 300 for winning. So the win isn't, it's not massive, but again, um, that's how you gain ISO. Now, straight off the bat, I would get Combat Surgeon um, and I would eventually work your way up to getting Survivalist. Now, when you buy, when you buy them, um, you have to upgrade them. So remember that. So save your ISO, don't waste your ISO. Now, hey, doing, Slick? as you, you see here, you've got implant and, got and, and ISO 4 recyclers and all of this. Thing. Don't start buying them. They're a waste of time. They unlock rare implants, exceptional implants like this, or well, rare implants. Most of these are pretty meme and nobody uses them anymore. Um, avoidance and carapace are probably the, the strongest ones out there. Rest of them, nobody really uses it. Kind of a waste. So... Don't bust your balls buying implant packs, rare implant packs. Save up your ISO, put it towards like something like Combat Surgeon, and then upgrade Combat Surgeon to max with the ISO that you save. Um, stuff like this, that's for outfits. Um, stuff like this, um, these are for outfits as well. Now, if I'm just gonna briefly talk about outfits. So, you wanna join an active outfit or somebody that's active and, and, and groups up. Now, there isn't many active outfits out there, but try and um, try and either join an outfit or start your own. Now, if you're starting your own, you want to recruit people who who follow Waypoint or or in general kind of group up a lot. I mean, having two medics that medic each other is really strong and can be really fun. You know, it can improve your gameplay and make gameplay a bit better rather than just as a solo player going and dying. Now, where do you find these people? Well. It's, it can be kind of hard to find them for your chosen faction. A lot of times you'll get trolled, but going onto Reddit, maybe there's a there's a PS4 Discord on Reddit. Um, but the, um, sorry, PS4 Discord on Reddit. Sorry, there's a PS4 subreddit to do with Planet Side. Now, should I would I recommend it? Not really. There's a lot of memeing and trolling going on in there. So you go in there, you post a topic, people kind of troll you. Um, but generally. I would ask in faction chat. So to, to ask in faction chat, you swipe the touchpad, you'll get the chat menu, and then it will go to faction. So here you go. So ask in there, you click chat, and then say whatever you want to say, like say hi, I'm not going to do it because people will wonder what's going on. But you could introduce yourself and say, I'm looking for people who use mic, or you know, I'm looking for veteran players to hang out with. Um, you know, someone to show me the game. People will hopefully respond. Um, it'd be a bit better than using than using Reddit. There's also a Discord server. There's like a main Planet Side Discord server for PC, and in there it has PS4 or it has console. So there is that. Um, that can be kind of trolly, but um, it's better than using. I would say it's better than using Reddit. So in here, this is called Merit Points Vendor, and you gain merit points by being in an outfit. Every time you attack and defend a base, you gain merit points. Now, don't waste any daybreak in here. Don't 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 buy anything with your own money. Um, you'll you'll gain stuff over time. So it's just it's just takes ages to get that 
to get to get stuff because you have to rank up in your outfit and then you gain merit points and to buy an item you might have the merit points for it but you can't buy it yet because you have to rank up so you know it takes a while um, you've got infantry gear that you can get um, I would recommend getting the medic one uh, the medic armor if you can and then I would go for something like a deployable um, a good deployable to get I always find is the ordinance dampness schematic is really good um, and the caltrop schematic um, most of the rest of them I don't really use um, so this is sanctuary now the, the game as a whole is based around attacking and defending bases so I'm just going to teleport to the other continent so to do that I click the map and I um, I zoomed out on the map until it went to Hossen. Now I'm going to go to Hossen and kind of give you an insight into what you may be doing in the game. Now, that Sanctuary as a whole, people have struggled to get out of Sanctuary. I've literally had people say, I've been walking around for two hours and I can't get out of Sanctuary. Um, the developers of the game don't really give a shit in terms of sorting that out. Um, they've said in the past, oh, we're going to put arrows down and all the rest of it. But the thing is with console, console, they skip a lot of stuff. I feel like console, they're not even interested in console really. Um, it's unfortunate really, but it's its what it is. So a lot of people join the game and don't stay. It's kind of sad really, sad reality of Planetside on, on console, but um, it is what it is. So if you join the game, if you're joining the game now, the game I would say is it's still pretty active. There's still people around, but um, generally um, trying to find active people to hang out with who use mic and coordination can be kind of hard. So a lot of times when I first started, um, I started doing my own outfit in the end, like because I was in an outfit and then out the outfit folded. And a lot of people um, from that outfit kind of was outfitless. So I just started my own. But generally, yeah, like getting cohesion in the game can be kind of hard. So you know if you're struggling just start your own get your own cohesion try and invite friends you know two medics stuff like that is really helpful so anyway i'm in a place called the warp gate now if you're new you're not going to know what it is but generally the warp gate looks like this now if you go on the map um to get on the map by the way i click the touchpad and i zoom out so you press l2 to zoom out now as you can see here um you've got obviously host and western warp gate you've got another warp gate here and another warp gate here now the enemy can't get in the warp gate they can't get in there and kill you it's not going to happen now to transport to a different base you click up you click redeploy by clicking a square on the map and you'll see that you can teleport to any of these map uh, any of these bases now as you can see this base down here is being attacked now there's no one defending really these bits here the reason why is because we're preoccupied fighting here this is why outfits are, in, uh, are quite good. You can have an outfit of a couple of guys and they can break off and go and defend these bases. But yeah. So <clears throat> this is what it is. Now to get to a base that's occupied, like for example, um, Woodman's ASC Labs. Say you wanted to attack that. So we go here to, to um, Moss Ridge Command Center. We would spawn on it. We would pull a Sunderer. A Sunderer is a vehicle that has mobile spawn capacity. So if you put a mobile spawn down, it means that allies can um, spawn on it. So let me just show you what I mean. So you've got here, you've got Sunderer. So you click the Sunderer, and then it will allow you to put down within a certain area, you can put down a spawn point like this. So as you can see, um, it's opened up and now I'm able to change class and people are able to spawn on me. Now I'm just going to spawn back on the base and I'm just going to give you the basics of a Sunderer and what to build. So I'll just spawn on it again. Right, as you can see, um, Sunderer wise, so Sunderer are like the main, the, one of the first things that you'll probably put certs into. Now guns wise, you want to stick with the basic backlist guns. They got an upgrade not so long ago, and they're actually not that bad if you've got two of them. If you've got two gunners shooting, they're actually pretty good. Now, you could upgrade them. Generally, um, when you're upgrading them, I would go for magazine size instead of reload, and I would put...
put um, something like a one times five on or something. Um, I wouldn't go for the max zoom um, as a new player. I wouldn't really go there. In utility wise, I would go fire suppression. Uh, I would go racer combat, um, racer high speed chassis. And then I would, um, these, so these, there's a lot going on here, but generally to take away from this, you want to get deployment shield up to max as quick as you can, because that's really helpful. Um, when you deploy a Sunday, it gives you a bit of an overshield um, around it. So you can take damage a little bit. Um, vehicle stealth, when you get vehicle stealth to max, um, it enables you to have an invisible Sunday. Um, when you have proximity radar, so proximity radar means that any vehicles around you uh, can get healed. So they get healed over time. Um, most of the rest of them, you're not really gonna use. You don't use mine guard. Nano auto repair, you would never use. You don't really use vehicle ammo dispenser. Um, the only time you would use that is maybe for a Colossus tank. Blockade armor, you don't really tend to use blockade armor. Now, a blockade armor Sunday um, is pretty good. Most people would use it for going to a point and point holding, like maybe put a cobalt on it and shoot some infantry. But overall, you're not really gonna use it. And proximity radar, you just would never use it. Now, I'm not gonna go into all the vehicles in this, but a Sunderer is the main one you would use. It's kind of the big one at the uh, out of all the sunders, out of all the vehicles. Sorry, um, you need to get a good sunderer going straight away. If you have an outfit or you're just starting out, I would recommend certain into a sunderer. Um, when you're pushing a base, make sure you've got friends with you who have repair sunders, so you're able to push uh, the next base without getting killed. Generally, grouping up in this in this uh, game is really strong. So as you can see here, I'm at um, Moss Ridge Command Center. Now, if this base was being taken, for example, um, you would see the point being counted down. If I go to the point, it enables me to say it was being taken and I'd killed the guy. I could run back to the point. Now the point looks like this. It's basically a, just basically a capture point here. Now, as you can see, um, it would automatically start counting down so I would automatically stop taking it back. If you was attacking a base, you would count down, uh, you would have a countdown timer. Now, attacking bases, I'm not gonna go and attack any bases, but if you are attacking bases, make sure you bring one or two guys with you. Don't go alone and start dying a bunch. Okay, don't solo tap a base. You're always gonna get resistance, so bring friends with you if you're trying to attack a base. Um, that's the best advice I can give you. It's all based around pop, population, having people with you. So it all, it you know, grouping up like um, some some advantages of grouping up, like having two medics. You know, if you die, a medic can medic you, and if he dies, you know, a medic can medic him. Stuff like that. So um, I'm using them as an example. There's there's thousands of examples. Like you could have a max, an engineer, and a medic, and the medic can hang back and medic people and the uh, ng can repair the max and the max can take you know obviously go through the door and attack you know the base or whatever he's doing but they're general examples um the things to take from this is medic for i would get medic first if nothing else um with medic i'll just briefly talk about it so you want to get nano regen to max medical applicator you want to get to max eventually you want to get revive grenades because revive grenades are really strong um, you want to get C4 explosives eventually and for this I would use advanced shield capacitor or flak armor or grenade bandola um, but I would stick with nano regen capacitor for the time being I wouldn't don't get nano eve don't get ammunition belt and don't get adrenaline pump um, they're kind of useless I would go for one of these grenade bandola is really handy when you have um, revive grenades so with revive grenades you can carry four of them you can chuck revive grenades all over the point and revive people really strong um, but for the most part stick with nano regen capacitor and you want to get the first thing you want to do nano regen device to max medical applicator to max and then that's really it for the you know you want to get c4 and all the rest of it don't entertain yourself with guns don't start buying new guns you don't need to stick with the nc1 gauze rifle it's a really strong gun Attachments wise, I would put the laser sight on there. 
I would put something like the short barrel on there. Now you have to realize infantry play, a lot of good infantry players will, um, won't aim down sights as much as hip fire. Hip firing is really strong in this game, so get used to hip firing. So stuff like short barrel, um, stuff like laser sight is really strong. Um, ammo types, things to note from ammo types. So soft point ammunition, um, without going into too much detail, soft point ammunition is good for close range and high velocity is good for long range to medium range. Um, just that's all I can take away from that. I do have a video on it if you want to search it, but um, generally soft point ammunition for close quarters. Now generally just buy the soft point ammunition, you're not really going to use high velocity. If for whatever reason some guns don't have the option to buy both, so just buy whatever you can. If you can't buy soft point, just get high velocity. You know, and just buy that. But generally, soft point ammunition is is a good all rounder because most of the fights you're going to engage in are close quarters. So that's that. Um, I think that's everything from medic. Pistol wise, just stick with the same pistol. But eventually, you're going to move over to something like the commissioner. Um, eventually, so commissioner. If you learn to headshot with it, it's quite strong. Um, but generally as a new player, I'm not going to go into that. That's kind of... Ah, as you can see, right here. So as you can see, I've just killed a guy who was trying to take the point. Um, so yeah, he had a shotgun in his hand. Um, most of the time, don't entertain yourself with buying new weapons. Shotguns in particular, shotguns can give you easy kills. But don't, um, don't go buying shotguns. Just leave it. Um, just, just stick with a standard Gauze rifle. Learn to hit headshots. Like headshots are really strong. As you can see, there's a guy there. Um, he's he should be taking the point. Yeah, he is. So as you can see, he's taking the point right now. As you can see, I'm going to go down there and engage him because. Oh, I died. But you get the gist of it. So as you can see, he's grouping up with his friends. Or they're well, they're not. They're probably not part of the same outfit, but um, no, they're not part of the same outfit. I'll just he's UVVS and he's he's A I M V or something. But to stay alive in this game, group up. You know, you could always go in faction chat and ask for help. But generally, people aren't going to come and help you. Um, the best thing to do is have friends to play with, um, or try and find some outfit members to kind of squad up with and push points. I'm going to leave this base. Um, I think I'm going to end the video there I think I've explained. Actually, one thing I'm going to explain before I go is how to use the chat and squads. Now, to use the chat in game, swipe the touchpad and it will come up with the chat. You've got general chat, which is just general. Um, you can chat to anybody. Um, outfit chat, which is obviously your outfit if you're in an outfit. Um, faction chat. Now, faction chat chats to your faction only. <coughs> with um, So, if you decide to join a squad, so let's join a random squad. Like, Serdix got a squad. If you join it, you will see here that you have squad chat. If you're in a platoon, it will come up with platoon chat. I'm just going to leave. Now, generally, um, with squads, so if you want to start a squad, you can go into my, you can go into social and you can join a squad. To start a squad, um, you go up to your friend or whoever it is and you click. Um, so you, you click options, um, you click R1 and then you'll click add to squad. You can go into, so you can swipe the touchpad and as you will see here, these two are enemies. But if they were friendly, um, I could click on them like this and I could invite to outfit and invite to squad. Now obviously they're enemies so I can't do that. But um, yeah, because look, if you click it, because they are an enemy. But yeah, so that's one way to invite people to squad. Um, to use in-game chat, um, or in-game mic chat. If you go to settings, you go across to vChat, um, that's where you'll find it. You want to enable voice. Um, most of this stuff you want to put to max because the game's really fidgety, but you want to go into vChat and um, play about there. Now, if you've enabled vChat and you still can't talk, go to R1, press R1, voice options, and then you want to go to outfit chat. Now, as you can see, I'm talking that now in outfit chat down below. You'll see a green dot and it will say W correspondent and then my PSN name. That will be who's talking. So um, 
you might be in a squad and quite a few people are talking but that's how they sort it so click r1 voice options and then outfit if there's a squad up and you're in a squad you could click squad if you're in a platoon you could click platoon proximity chat so if i click proximity um that means that i'm talking to people around me who aren't in my squad they're just around me now um if you go into settings down below and you go to v chat you can turn down certain things so for example if somebody's playing music in proximity chat which happened before you could turn down proximity chat to zero and they won't be able to do that anymore so that's um, just a little tip there um, it's easy to get um, people spamming mic but yeah you can also mute mic stuff by going into settings again uh, v chat and then go into enable voice or take in voice off so that kind of explains a lot of the basic stuff and what you're going to be doing remember that population is is always key um, in this game you know grouping up with friends population having having a having a couple of guys with you when you're pushing bases you know don't go alone and stuff like that so uh, i hope you found this video informative this is like the 50th video I've done because I messed up. As you can see, the enemies took the facility. But um, yeah, I did a, I did a couple of videos before this, and they didn't really turn out like I wanted. I missed bits, so I'm just gonna do this video and chuck it out there, see what it says. So yeah, anyway, I'll uh, hope you guys understand or get used to it. So yeah, I hope you guys have a better time than I did when I was new. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it there, guys. I'll see you soon. Take care.